All right, what we're looking at here is 1.7, exploring operations with functions. If two functions have domains that overlap, they can be added, subtracted, or multiplied to create a new function on that shared domain. So basically, the two functions, we can do this graphically by adding or subtract, adding, subtracting, or multiplying the y-coordinates in each pair of ordered pairs that have identical x-coordinates. Or, algebraically, this can be done by adding, subtracting, or multiplying the expressions for the dependent variable, then simplifying. So, what we're doing here is we're going to look at some examples. Given f equals a bunch of coordinates and g equals another bunch of coordinates, you're asked to determine g minus f, f times g. So what does this mean for us? So let's look at step by step. For g minus f, this is what we need to do. We want to subtract g minus f. To do that, we need to look up here. We need to find the ones that match. For example, they have the exact same x-coordinates. Who cares about the y? It's the x-coordinates we need to find. The ones that have matching x-coordinates are the ones that we can add, subtract, or multiply. So the first one, 0, 5, has a matching one in g with 0, 4. 1, 2 has a matching one with 1, 3. So again, what are you looking at? You're looking at the x-coordinates. They have the same x-coordinates, so we can manipulate the y-coordinates. These have the same x-coordinates, we can manipulate the y-coordinates. Let's look at the next one, 4, 6. Does it have a matching one? And yes, it does. It matches with 4, 9. 5, 7, unfortunately, does not have a matching one, so that doesn't go with the other one. And you notice in G, we did not circle the ones that have matching x-coordinates. So the first one, what we want to do is subtract G minus F. So starting with G, 0, 4, we want to subtract the y-coordinates going in this direction, from G to F, because we want to go G minus F. So those two match, those two match, and those two match, just to remind us, G minus F means we want to be able to take the coordinates and subtract them. So we will have the same x and subtract the y's. Again, the next one, same x and subtract the y's. 3 minus 2 is 1. That last one, 4, and then you have 9 minus 6, which is 3. And those are the coordinates for g minus f. Now, we want to determine f times g. So f times g means that we're going to take the same x and then multiply the y's to get 0, 20, 1, 6, and 4, 54. So we did that by multiplying the y coordinates and we keep the same x to get all of these values. All right, example number two. Determine the equation of f at x minus g of x if f at x is equal to x squared plus 3x and g at x is equal to x squared minus 7x plus 12. What do we do here? Well, first of all, in order to subtract them, they must have a shared domain. Do both of these have the same domain? Well, if you look carefully, both f and g are parabolas. Because of parabolas, they have the same domain, because it's all be x belongs to real. So, we can now subtract the two equations. f at x minus g of x is equal to x squared plus 3x. So let's just go step a couple of steps back. x squared plus 3x, which is our f, minus our g. Now don't forget, our g has to have the values in brackets because we're subtracting all of g. In order to do that, at the, uh, next we're going to expand this and simplify to give us 10x minus 12. So after we subtract the two parabolas, funny enough, we end up with a straight line. 
So, let's move, in, let's move on and move forwards. Next, example number three. Use the graphs of f and g to sketch the graph of f plus g, f minus g, and f times g. So I'm going to give you one graph here, f and g, right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this in three separate screens. The first one we're going to look at is f plus g. So we need to see just f plus g. So we're going to just circle that so we're looking at f plus g. To do that, we also have to look at how these two are related. To do f plus g, we can only work in the same domains that they both run in. So we can only work in from here to here, all the way up to here to here, but not including this point because this point says it doesn't exist here, but it exists very close to 2. So let's look. So again, what we're looking at is f plus g, so we're going to do it in blue, and we're going to color this function blue. So f plus g, what I did is you take the same x and we add the y's. So this is 0 plus negative 3 is negative 3. Put a closed dot here. Let's pick another point. Oh, let's say the y-intercept is a good one. So this is 1 plus, sorry, not 1, 2 plus negative 2, which gives you 0, so we put a closed dot there, and we can pick another point. So I'm going to go over here and pick another one out here at the very end, and we get up here, the last one, 6 plus 0 gives us 6, but we're going to leave it open because the domain does not exist in the g function. So we're going to leave it open. So in the previous unit, the closed circle trumped the Sorry, the closed circle, yes, trumped the open circle, but in this case, when we're adding, subtracting, and multiplying functions, the open circle trumps the closed circle. So there are times when you have to know which one is which. All right. Next thing you're going to do is connect the three dots to make you a straight line, and that is the function f plus g. All right, let's move forwards to the next one. We want to do f minus g. So we're going to start it off by taking the graph and creating our function. All right, here it is, our f and our g again. And what we have to do is create f minus g. So to do that, we're going to color our f minus g function in green. All right, f minus g right here. And we're going to use the same three dots we did before. So what we have to do is take this, 0 plus negative 2, uh, sorry, 0 minus negative 2, because it's f minus g, 0 minus negative 2, negative 3, whoops, here we go again, 0 minus negative 3 gives us 3. Then the next point, 2 minus negative 2 gives us, what number does it give us? It gives us 4. And then finally, we look at the last one. 6 minus 0 gives us 6 but open at the 6. And then we connect the line and we call it f minus g. So again, we're using the same three points. Here comes the tricky one. What about the product? Let's look at an example of the product. So again, we're going to the function. Let's go straight to there. We have our f and our g, and we're going to multiply. So what are we going to multiply? So again, we're going to circle, and we're going to use the f times g we're going to do right now. So what is it we have? Well, you take 0 times negative 3. 0 times negative 3 gives us 0. That's why there's a purple dot here. 2 times negative 2 gives us negative 4. We keep going to the last one. 6 times 0 gives us 0, which is why the dot is here. But you notice something weird happened. It went down, and then it came back up. Hmm, something's going on over here, and we don't exactly know. So we should probably pick a few more points. So I'm going to pick a point, let's say over here. Over here I see a point here, 4 
and negative 1. 4 times negative 1 gives us negative 4. So that's another point. So well, now we're getting closer. You notice here these two are mirror images. These two are mirror images. That's how it, why I chose that point is you could see that 2 over and then so this is the distance between these two and their mirror images. So this one probably has a mirror image pretty close to it. There it is. So something's going on between here and here. So what we have to do is estimate what could possibly be going on between here and here. Now, if we think about it, from here to here, this looks like a line. From here to here, this looks like a line. So what we're looking at is a line times a line, a degree one times a degree one. Well, the only possibility is that you will have a degree two function, which means a, probably a quadratic. So we need to find a point somewhere down here that will give us our turning point, our point that comes across and changes direction. So we do that by saying, okay, I know this value right here is 3. I know this value is negative 1.5 roughly. And it turns out that you're going to have this point right here. 3 times negative 1.5 is negative 4.5. So there is our point. And that will tell us that this parabola, this is a parabola curving in this direction. It's just a way to, we're estimating that this is what it's going to look like. Again, we're guessing with a picture. So we can only guess with what we know. All right, folks. That's the end of the videos. That's all of them there. Um, hope this explains everything. This is the end of Unit 1. Go forth and study. Good luck on your test. Take care.